The briefing is focused on the importance of diversity in agriculture and in diets, why this is under threat, and what can be done about it. And it's primarily focused on the developing world. But because these trends are operating everywhere, it's relevant for developed countries as well. Agricultural biodiversity is currently at risk as a small number of crops and crop varieties are grown around the world in response to a variety of commercial pressures. And the same trend is also operating for animal breeds as well. This is very risky because a small number of crops and crop varieties are vulnerable both to climate change and to a variety of pests and diseases. For instance, 95% of the commercial banana market is accounted for by only one variety of banana, the Cumvendish. And that variety is susceptible to a virus. In terms of wheat, 80 to 90 percent of the wheat varieties grown today are susceptible to a type of stem rust. What we're seeing is a homogenization of global diets in many ways. For instance, just 30 crops account for 95% of global calories. And only four crops, rice, wheat, maize, and potatoes, accounts for 60% of global calories. At the same time, people's diets are changing. And that often entails greater consumption of energy-dense, nutrient-poor poor foods, namely ultra-processed foods, such as chips, sodas, candies, which in turn is leading to an epidemic of obesity and non-communicable diseases, such as diabetes. For instance, one in 12 people worldwide suffer from diabetes. We want policymakers, farmers, NGOs, academics, and other relevant stakeholders to prioritize diversity in people's diets, and in terms of food production, rather than focusing exclusively on productivity. Of course, it's very important to produce enough food globally, but we also need to be prioritizing health, sustainability, nutrition, and affordability. We would like them to reorient food and agricultural policies to prioritize diversity affordability and sustainability. That's one. Number two, we recommend using markets to spur diversity in production, such as through procurement and by allowing informal markets to thrive. Number three, maintaining and promoting local varieties, local crop varieties and animal breeds, such as crop varieties like millet, which are more nutritious than many of the standard staples like maize. Fourth, to nurture biocultural heritage and traditional knowledge, particularly that which is protected by women. And fifth, to promote innovative multi-stakeholder platforms such as food labs, which can help to catalyze change and raise awareness among a large number of stakeholders worldwide.